Today on Six Sister Stuff, I'm showing you what I make for my whole entire Christmas dinner. So my name is Kristen and my sisters and I love sharing simple, easy recipes with you guys so you can get dinner onto the table. Today is our Christmas dinner video. I'm so excited to share it with you because I love Christmas dinner, I really do. We have ham, we have amazing cheesy potatoes, we have Parmesan rolls, and then we have my mom's pistachio jello salad. So that's what we're making today. So stick around, watch how I do it, especially if you're an Instant Pot fan, we are cooking the ham in the Instant Pot. All right guys, if you're ready, let's get cooking. We are starting off with the Instant Pot ham because it's one of my favorite ways to cook ham. So this is a spiral ham. It's already been pre-cooked, so you really don't have to do much to it other than add a lot of flavor and heat it up. So that's what your Instant Pot is for. So we're gonna make a yummy sauce to go on top of it and then we'll cook it. So let's get started. So I have a half a cup of brown sugar that we're just gonna dump in here. Then we have a half a cup of honey. I'm kind of just gonna eyeball it um, because really you can never have too much honey. Am I right? I am right. Then we have two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. We'll just pour on top. Again, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball my two tablespoons. And then you, want, you can't forget your spices. So we have a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm just gonna put those in here too. And I'm just gonna take my basting brush and just kind of mix it all together. All right, once it's nice and all mixed together, now it's time to put everything into the Instant Pot. So, I'm gonna scooch that forward. Let's scooch just over for you. So, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna put a trivet onto the bottom of the Instant Pot. Now, you don't want a high trivet, you want one that's pretty low. So, trivet on the bottom. If you don't have a trivet, I've done it before without a trivet, it works just fine. Next, we're gonna add a cup and a half of water. So we'll just pour that into the bottom of the pot because it has to pressurize, right? Then I'm gonna show you a little bit how I'm gonna do it to the ham, but then I'm gonna transfer it over so it's not a big brown sugar mess right here. So we're gonna take some of our sauce and I like to keep put it in between each piece and just kind of spread it around a little bit. If you need it more liquidy, you can do that too and just add a little bit more water, but I like it nice and thick because it will get more liquidy as it goes on. So just depending on how you like it. Some people just like to take this and just pour it all over so the, the edges are nice and flavored. I love my inside flavored. So transfer it over. It's gonna be kind of a tight fit. If it doesn't fit all the way for you, you can always trim some edges off and let it fit, but it fits just fine for me. So we're going to just continue Basting this little guy, basting the outside, basting the inside, just to give it some yummy flavor. I love that Dijon mustard flavor too, and it, it's, mm, I can smell it. Once everything's in, you're ready to go. So it's okay if your ham goes over a little bit on the line. You have a little bit of room on your lid, so it's okay if it goes over just a little bit. As long as your whole entire thing is not over, and as long as your lid can go on, you're fine. Okay, so we're gonna put the lid on. There we go. Now, usually I'll have you turn the knob to sealing, not venting, and, but this one is a different one, so I don't have to push, I don't have to turn any knobs, it will automatically do it for me. We're gonna push the pressure cook button. Now, all you have to really do is get it warm. So we're gonna go all the way down to four minutes. You heard that right, just, just four minutes is how long you cook your ham. The good thing is you can cook it and then you can just leave it in your Instant Pot until you're all done. All right, so we are good. This is a little bit of a different pot, so I need to push start, but most of the time you can just set the timer and walk away. Okay, so we are all done here. We're just going to wait for it to cook and then, yep, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so once the timer is done, you had your four minutes of cooking, you can go ahead and release the pressure. Once all the pressure's out, carefully open your lid. There we go. And you guys, your ham is done. It is all done and it smells so good. Now I love this because you can make a delicious gravy with the drippings that are in there and you also get just really good ham. So instead of pulling it all out because it's still burning hot, I'm just gonna cut you a few pieces just so you can see how good it is. Ooh, there we go. Oh my gosh. 
Okay, we colored up the edges too with the sauce that we put on. It's, it is delicious, absolutely delicious. Okay, we're all done with our ham. Let's move on to the side dishes. So this one is our three ingredient Parmesan rolls. Super simple, super fast, because I mean, you don't want to cook all day Christmas. No. So you want to show them how to do it? <laughs> yes, Perfect. so it's really easy. So we're, we're just using some Rhodes rolls. They're still a little frozen, so we're just gonna roll it in the butter and then just roll it in some Parmesan cheese. And then we have pre-sprayed this with non-stick cooking spray. And so then we'll just put it on our prepared pan. And that's and all there is to it. For it. go so for it. So simple. Now, if you don't have this Parmesan, you could always use just shredded yes. Parmesan too. Yeah. I've done that before and it works just fine. Yes. So, so simple. And you can make as many as you want, depending on how many family members you have. Yes. And you can use any, I think any frozen rolls will mm -hmm. work just fine. Okay, so after we get these all set up, you wanna let them rise. So as soon as they're done rising, then you can stick them in the oven, and then they cook at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. Keep an eye on them, you don't want them to burn. And yeah, super simple and easy. Okay, you guys, that's all you have to do for this recipe, so now we'll move on to the next. Nice. All right, the next recipe, which is our side dish, is our cheesy hash brown potatoes. Now, these are also known as funeral potatoes, mostly that name is known in Utah. So I hope you like them, I love them. All right, we're gonna start with a 32 ounce bag of hash browns um, and we're just gonna dump half of it in right now. And then kind of just spread it. Okay, now we're gonna make the sauce that goes on the top. So we're gonna have two cups of sour cream, just pour it right into a bowl. And then we want two cans of cream of chicken soup. One and two. My mom made this, made this at least once a month for our Sunday dinners. And of course, always on, on Christmas. So it's one of our favorites. Okay, we have those. Then we're gonna add a third cup of onions. You just put it in and then just a little bit of salt and pepper, just to give it a little flavor. Okay, we're just gonna mix this up just a little bit. Okay, before it's all the way mixed in, we are gonna add two cups of cheddar cheese. And again, I buy the free shredded because it's just easier for me. If you wanna shred your own, that's great too. I'm just gonna mix this all together. Make this the perfect cheesy, Mixture, woo, I'm out of control. Here we go. <laughs> okay, we're getting there. Almost ready. Now I'm using the shredded hash browns. You can also use the cubed hash browns. That will work too. So whatever kind you like best. Okay. We are ready for this. So we're gonna take half of our cheesy mixture and kind of gently place it on top of our hash browns. It's kind of a little bit hard to mix around, so that's why I like to do it in dollops, I guess you could say. There we go. The rest of that, okay. And then just carefully spread it around, trying not, not to make your hash browns come up as much, because you want all that yummy, cheesy creaminess in between. Okay, almost done here. Looking good. Okay, now we're just gonna add the other half of the hash browns on top of these ones. There we go. Just spread it out a little bit. Now this nine by 13 pan isn't very thick. I would suggest maybe making sure it's a full nine by 13 pan because we might, um, yeah, it might overflow a little, but that's okay. It will still taste amazing. All right, same same step, just doing dollops again. Getting all our cheesy yumminess on top. All right, and we're just gonna spread this. Okay guys, it's looking good. It's looking so good. 
Now for my favorite part is like the, the, the crumble on top, the cracker crumble. We're all ready to go here. So now we're gonna take two cups of Ritz crackers that we've crumbled up and then just a half a cup of melted butter. We're just gonna pour it on top of our cracker crumble and then just mix it all together. I don't know what it is about the cheesy potatoes having like a crumble on top. It's, it is my favorite. Okay, whoo, kind of losing it. Here we go. Okay, once all the butter is pretty much touching all of the crackers, we are good to go. So I'm just going to just lightly just kind of sprinkle this on, make sure that it gets everywhere. It is smelling so good. Literally reminds me of like Sundays growing up. So now we are all done, we're ready to go. We're gonna cook it at 350 degrees for about 35 minutes. All right guys, all done with our funeral potatoes. They smell so, so good. You, yes, you've got to try these, you've got to. Okay, all done with this one, let's move on to the next. If you know me, you know I love Jello, so I'm making my mom's pistachio Jello salad. We're gonna start with a 3.4 ounce of pistachio pudding, and we're just gonna put it into the bottom of our bowl. Here, we'll make it a little easier. There we go. Can't leave any in there. I have a 20 ounce can of pineapple tidbits, so you wanna leave the lid because you're gonna drain out all the juice right now. You don't want a ton of pineapples at the moment, just you just want the juice so we can try and dissolve some of that pudding. Ooh. There we go. And it's okay if there's a little bit of juice left, it's fine. Okay, you're gonna take your whisk, mix this all together, try and mix it the best you can, try and dissolve all the, the big chunks of sugar. We don't want big chunks. Although there are pistachios in there, so there will be some chunks, but not jello chunks. Okay. Now you are done. Well, not yet. Okay, we're gonna add a container of Cool Whip. I, you guys, I love Cool Whip. I could eat it just right out of this, the container with a spoon. I do quite often, actually. It's one of my favorites. Not the best for you, but it's good going down. Okay, and we're just gonna kind of fold this in. I love this recipe because it's perfect if you're in a hurry. Like, I don't like to spend a ton of time cooking on Christmas, and so this recipe only takes about five minutes to throw together, and it's done. You can eat it five minutes after you, after you make it, so. Okay, all mixed together. Still mixing a little bit more of that Cool Whip, but we'll put other things in too. Okay, now we're gonna add the rest of our pineapple. Get some chunks in there now. Now I have about two cups of marshmallows. You don't have to add the marshmallows if you don't want to. My kids love the marshmallows. And then I just have two bananas in here. So just dump those all in. Whoop, all in, here we go. And just fold everything together. I'm curious if you guys have any special traditions that you have on Christmas. This is always our Christmas salad because one, it's green, and two, it literally only takes a few minutes, so that's why my mom would make it all the time, and that's why I make it with my kids. So down below, tell me your favorite Christmas food that you guys have. I'm curious, curious to hear. Now when we lived not close to family, which was for many, many years, we would just have a little Christmas dinner. So I'd always make sure I had this jello salad, and then we would always have pizza along with it. So yeah, I mean, you guys, you do you, and it will be just fine. Okay, you guys, we are done. Spread it around on the top. Sometimes I like to clean the edges too, so it's pretty if I have people coming over, but it's just my family. This is all I do. All right, you guys, that's all there is to it. So simple and easy, about five minutes to throw together. Now, if you love this Christmas dinner and you want some more ideas for dinner, you can go ahead and check out this video up there. Hopefully that will help you come up with any other ideas that you need. All right, guys, see you later, bye.